Hi guys, so this is definitely a different type of video that I have not done before. And the background's new, which is just a blanket, but I thought it'd be fun to add a little bit of spice. So I am going to be doing a Q&A today. And I know I'm not like a big shot YouTuber. I don't have millions of subscribers, but I did ask my Instagram followers, which my Instagram is at HadleyBF if you guys want to go follow. But I did ask my Instagram followers if they had any questions for me and surprisingly they did so I wanted to go ahead and make a video about me I guess I don't know or my advice so I did ask them if they wanted their usernames in the video and I got rid of the ones that didn't so let's go ahead and start with the questions so I'm just gonna dive in with the first one so I got how to stay involved in your faith with temptation all around you so I obviously not perfect I fail I give in to temptation temptation I I'm just gonna give you advice on how I try my best to not fall to temptation so I'm not really sure what temptation they were talking about but I think it's important to set goals and to reward yourself whenever you have a day where temptation was in your face and you said no I mean I have days where I'm like I beat temptation today and then I have days where I did it and I think it's really important to reward yourself and to know how powerful that is to say no whenever Satan is in your face trying to get you to do something so it's so important to not just focus on whenever you do give in to it and focus on when you don't So once you reward yourself and you credit yourself for all the times that you've said no Then it'll make it even easier to say no the next time So that's kind of my advice to you add it to your new year's resolution list I really don't want to give in to this temptation. Yeah, pray about it and try your best next one Which is just a pretty general question. Are you enjoying college? I I am enjoying the path that I'm on and I'm enjoying like the friends along the way But it's very hard for me right now to get extremely excited about school because it's online And then whenever I go to college, I don't have my car. So I don't have anywhere to go I'm pretty much trapped in my room. It's winter. It's like 20 degrees. So right now I'm not enjoying college I was enjoying it a lot more in the fall, but like right now not right now But it is fun whenever it's not 20 degrees outside. So this is the question I I got what is your favorite worship song i have springtime and i have in your mist those are like my two favorite. I really like the feeling of springtime, but I'd rather sing my heart out to In Your Midst. So yeah. What is my favorite part about IU? So if you guys didn't know, I go to Indiana University and my favorite part about IU is just how you get to see so many different people. So everybody comes from such different backgrounds and I think it's really interesting to meet people and to see how they've developed and see what they like. It's just really interesting to meet new people for me and I also love the buildings they're so beautiful I love all the limestone and it's like Harry Potter type vibes so so I got this question has your college experience so far challenged you in your faith so um honestly I feel like I went to college and I improved my faith because I really got into my faith the summer before I got baptized right before I went to college so I just really had the motivation I had the endurance to, to be strong in my faith but then again there's not a lot of partying at IU right now because of COVID and I'm not a big partier anyway so it wasn't hard for me to stay strong in that way like I didn't fall to temptation in those ways because I wasn't around it so it was pretty easy it has been challenging or whenever I study for eight plus hours a day and then I'm like oh I just don't want to read my Bible and another way is that I took this religion class and it was a chore to read my Bible because we had to read like chapters and chapters and chapters of books and analyze them and it wasn't in like a, I'm learning about the Bible it was breaking it down into a way that wasn't even Christian anymore because my teacher was an atheist so it was really hard to read my Bible during that time because I just felt like reading my Bible was a chore so it has challenged me in that way because it was super super hard to stay motivated who are my favorite youtubers so I subscribe to a lot of youtubers but my favorite are Allison Bickerstaff which she's been my favorite for like probably the past couple years she's a Christian youtuber she just bought a new house or she just built a new house with her husband 
husband in it. It's just she's just so wholesome and I love her. And then Aspen and Parker, they have a vlog channel together and then they have their little baby named Cove. And I love watching her grow and watching that channel. It's just so good. What are some goals that you have for the new year? Here are my resolutions. I wrote them down because I feel like that kind of inspires me more. But first of all, I kind of wrote a prayer because I want to really do it and I want to plan it with God because if I don't plan it with God, then I have more of a chance of not doing it. So, so what I wanted to focus my resolutions this year on is spiritual goals more than I wanted to focus on like losing weight and eating good because I already like to work out and eat healthy. So I didn't really feel like that was a major difference if I wrote that down. So instead, I wanted to focus spiritually and focus on being a better person and kind of have those goals. So I said, God, I want to base my new year's resolutions around you. I ask that you help to guide me and make these things possible. So I started that out with prayer. So my first one is to stop buying and worrying about material things and stop finding satisfaction in it, put my satisfaction in God. That's what I want to do instead. My next one's a pretty big one, but it's help guide lost souls to heaven by spreading love, kindness, and the gospel. It is so important for me to do this. I hope by 22, I've gotten at least one soul to heaven. So that is my goal. Like it doesn't sound like a lot, but the difference you'd have to make from someone not having eternal life to being saved is such a vast distance. And I think it, it would just mean the world to me if I could help inspire somebody to go to heaven and to live their life for Jesus Christ. My next resolution is to be a better friend, girlfriend, and daughter by being patient, loving, and thoughtful. My next resolution is stick to the purpose that you've given me. Obviously, some people know their purpose and some people don't, and it's not bad if you don't know your purpose yet, but I definitely pray about it and ask him. But I feel like my purpose is to help people and to use my knowledge to help people. So that's why I want to go to medical school and I want to save people and be as close to Christ in my actions as I can like saving somebody's life is about as close as you can get so that's how I feel like my purpose is and I encourage you guys to find your purpose and really look into it my next resolution is try not to gossip or yearn for drama it instills hatred and jealousy and I pray I avoid this behavior in 2021 have an have optimistic hope regardless of the struggle that comes this year a lot of us struggled with this year is having hope even though COVID and all the things that happen and I did say create a healthy body and treat it with love and care and I didn't really go in depth like I want to lose 20 pounds or I want to eat a certain amount of calories because I don't feel like that's as important for me I feel like just maintaining health spiritually and mentally and physically throughout this year and then my last one was give God all the glory that's the most important because you don't find true happiness and joy and peace unless you give your life to God so those are my resolutions sorry those were kind of a lot took a lot of time okay next question. What area of medicine do you want to go into? I honestly don't know. Like when I watch Grey's Anatomy, I'm like, I want to be a surgeon, but I probably don't because I want to have a lot of kids. So I don't know if I'd do that, but I think I would be a good pediatrician because I love kids. But I also think that area would be hard because you'd have to see a lot of sick kids. So I'm sticking to general until something calls my name. But yeah, what other colleges were you contemplating rather than IU? So I only went on two college visits and I only applied to two places. And that was Butler and IU and I liked Butler for like the prestigious like it was really cool obviously it was super expensive but I got a big scholarship for it but I didn't like the school I didn't really like the small feeling of it so I didn't go there I'll tell you is the transition from high school to college hard for me it was hard because I have a boyfriend that's still in high school and so going from seeing him every single day at school and outside of school to not seeing him for a week that was really hard for me and I also feel like the school schooling and the way that you get to your classes and the way that you submit assignments that was really hard for me so it was hard in some ways but it definitely takes a month or two to adjust to and it took me about two one to two months to really get a feel for it this is who's your best friend which i have a few best friends but i'll have jesse as this answer favorite memory from college so far so i have a few me and my friend went to crew at iu which is like a christian organization and we went and we watched a testimony and everything and we laid blankets on the ground and it was really fun and I went with Charlie my friend and that was like a really good memory for me and then another time we walked to Kirkwood which is like the downtown of Bloomington and we made TikToks on the way and <laughs> we went out to eat so that was really fun and then another memory that I have making breakfast for them and my mini waffle maker and them coming over which I vlogged one day and then 
going at like 9 p.m. to get burritos on Kirkwood. Yeah, it was really fun. And I did that with like Harley, Haley, Bailey, and Charlie. What is my favorite thing about college? My favorite thing is that I can do things more my way. I like the freedom of college. How do you remove yourself from a negative slash toxic friendship? And she says, you've got experience. So I do have some experience with this and I don't want to dwell on those people because I don't think that they're bad people but I think there's friendships that just don't mix as well. I think that we've all been through something like this and in these friendships that I've had we just didn't share the same values, we didn't want to do the same things. I think that's really important in a friendship is to share those same core values because if you don't then your signals are going to get crossed, you could get into temptation, you could, I don't know, there's a lot of bad things that can come from it. So basically what I've done is I've set priorities and boundaries and if friends cross those then I obviously back off a little bit and if they continue to push those boundaries and those priorities then I kind of just slowly ease myself away from them because I just don't need that type of negativity in my life it hurts you and I didn't realize how unhappy I was in friendships until I removed myself from them and then I was like this was like a energy sucking relationship and now I am free from it I don't think you should ever cause drama or post about it or do anything like that but I think you should slowly remove yourself stop talking to them as much but not in a rude way just kind of get yourself kind of away from it do you want to do YouTube throughout college and even throughout a medical career so I actually do I really like YouTube but I really enjoy making videos and I'll probably stop when I have kids I think it's really important that I document this because there's a lot of people that are gonna want to go to medical school and I'm gonna vlog what it's really like how stressful it is so I think it's really important that I vlog it I've been thinking about getting an iPad do you recommend for school stuff I definitely recommend so I use notability and it's an app that you can have all of your classes on create different subjects and then I have an Apple pencil and I can write all my notes out on there and then they back up to your Google Drive so in case something gets lost it's always backed up so I recommend it it's been nice whenever I'm going to study and I only have to take my iPad instead of like six different notebooks so I think it's really handy I think it keeps everything organized for you I think it's definitely an investment but I would definitely recommend it what is your favorite book about faith I've been seeing some, but I haven't read any. My favorite book is probably the devotional book that I read, but it's called New Morning Mercies. I really like that devotional book. It really keeps me inspired and it's by a really good writer. So yeah, if you won the lottery, what would you do with the money? Probably pay off my student loans, my sister's student loans, and then I would pay off my mom and dad's debt and whatever they had. I'd probably invest the rest for medical school or just save the rest, which I know this is like boring boring because I'm not gonna like buy anything crazy but I think it's more important for me to save it since I have a really expensive future coming sorry that is a boring answer please tell me how you know God is real I'm not an atheist but I just don't understand and I want to so I actually had trouble because I haven't gotten this question before I texted my youth minister and I asked him this question because I wanted to know kind of what he would say to somebody that asked this so he said forever since the world was created people have seen the earth and sky through everything god made they can clearly see his invisible qualities his eternal power and divine nature so they have no excuse for not knowing god so that's romans 1 20 and then he goes if you look around intuitively you know there is god you may not believe it's jesus and it may be hard to wrap your brain around needing a savior and jesus being the savior of the world but most people can see that there are too many things that happen in our world the way that they do to say that there is no god behind it for example, sun is the right distance away from earth to sustain life and orbit allows for different seasons. Miracle of childbirth and how moms are designed. There are a million things like these when you stop to think about it. Wind is also a good analogy. You feel it on your skin and you see the damage it can cause. You know it's there because of its effects. You don't see it, but that doesn't prevent you from believing it exists. Same is true about God. Creation and the way things work point to intelligent design, meaning there has to be a creator behind what has been 
created. I think there are just signs, especially when you look for it. I think it's really hard to believe in something that you can't see, but that's why they call it faith. So I think just the way that I know that God is there is just the miracles that have been in my life, the way things that have worked out for me. But once you believe and once you devote your life to him, you can feel the joy and feel the love that he gives you. So I think by doing those things, by building a stronger relationship with him, I think that is how you really grow to know that he's there and that he's listening. Okay, let me give you a story. So I was in my Bible class and we were learning about idolatry. And idolatry is like whenever you, you use a material thing to represent God and you praise the material thing more than you praise God. So I was thinking about this, we were learning about the Israelites and they were worshiping the Ark of the Covenant, Covenant more than they were worshiping God. And I was like, I wonder if the Bible is like a form of idolatry because a lot of people put way more emphasis on the Bible than they do God. And then I literally had my devotional that day, the day I was thinking about it, it was about idolatry. And I never heard that word before that day. Like it's those little things that you think are coincidence. But then again, I didn't have to read that devotional that day. I could have forgot, I could have skipped it, I could have waited till the next day. Like that is just a sign from God that he is listening. So what sports have you played in your whole lifetime and what's your favorite sport to watch? The sports that I played, I've played volleyball, I ran cross country when I was in elementary school, I played basketball and soccer and track. So those are all the sports that I played. I played basketball and soccer in high school, so those were the only sports I stuck with, but I love basketball way more than I like soccer, and I'd say my favorite sport to watch is basketball. Most important things to take to college. I didn't think about this before, I probably should have. A mattress pad, because your mattress is gonna be firm. A coffee maker. I think you should take a water filter, like a, a jug, like I don't know how to explain it, like a Brita water filter so that you can use the sink water and it'll filter it for you. That way you don't have to walk to go get water every single time or buy bottles of water. You should buy a dish rack, like a drying rack. So if you are bringing plates and bowls and stuff like that, I would recommend a drying rack. Yeah, if I think of like a lot of things, I'll make a video about it. Mental health advice. So I would recommend if you're having like a bad mental health day, I would take a walk or um, run a bath if you have a bathtub. Listen to calm like study music or listen to your favorite song. Schedule out when you should do things because I feel like a lot of my bad mental health days is when I'm stressed. Plan out when you can do stuff and when you have to take a break. So give yourself breaks. Don't overwork yourself. Take a nap. I love naps. I take naps all the time. I feel like they help me a lot. Spend time with family or call a friend. I feel like that's kind of all the stuff that I do. I'm having a bad mental health day or cry. I cry all the time <laughs> and obviously everybody has their own ways of coping but crying is the way that I cope. Scream, go for a drive, listen to music. Those are kind of all the things I can think of. What is one thing you know now but wish you would have known before college? I really wish I would have known how to use everything. We did have more orientation but it was all online and I honestly skipped through all the videos showing us how to do stuff so I was unprepared I really didn't know how to do my classes I didn't know how to use the software I was so confused like crying about how confused I was that's something that I really wish I would have known so if you can find somebody that goes to that school and you can have them explain to you how to use the stuff that is what I recommend. How is my first semester at IU Bloomington? And I also have like talk about your experience with IU. So my first semester was good. I got good grades for me. I met some friends. I feel like I really know the feel and know where things are. I know how to use my software now. It was a good semester. It was hard. It was hard to be away from family and my boyfriend. So, but I really enjoyed the experience and I feel like being on on your own is definitely something everybody needs to experience period do you miss your friends from high school i do miss my friends from high school there's days when i miss them like a lot in college but i do make time to see the friends that i want to see i enjoy those moments more because i don't see them i think it's really made me grateful for who i have in my life and the time that i have with them it's really made me grateful 
Even though I'm away from them, I still text them every day, I talk to them. So I think as long as you make effort to talk and catch up, then you won't miss them as much. Obviously you'll always miss them, but it makes it a little easier whenever you can have updates and talk to them about stuff and how life's going. So, whew, that was so many questions. I'm tired. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really enjoyed this. It just feels so good to have people that watch my videos and I'm just so thankful that I get to make them and that you guys care what I have to say. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.